In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us acknowledge our sins so that we may worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, Amalek came and waged war against Israel. Moses therefore said to Joshua, pick out certain men and tomorrow go out and engage Amalek in battle. I will be standing on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him. He engaged Amalek in battle after Moses had climbed to the top of the hill with Aaron and Hur. As long as Moses kept his hands raised up, Israel had the better of the fight. But when he let his hands rest, Amalek had the better of the fight. Moses' hands, however, grew tired, so they put a rock in place for him to sit on. Meanwhile, Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. And Joshua mowed down Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remain faithful to what you have learned and believe because you know from whom you learned it and that from infancy you have known the sacred scriptures which are capable of giving you wisdom and salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for refutation, for correction, and for training in righteousness so that the one who belongs to God may be competent, equipped for every good work. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingly power, proclaim the word, be persistent, whether it is convenient or inconvenient, convince, reprimand, encourage through all patience and teaching. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told his disciples a parable about the necessity for them to pray always without becoming weary. He said, there was a judge in a certain town who neither feared God nor respected any human being. And a widow in that town used to come to him and say, render a just decision for me against my adversary. For a long time, the judge was unwilling, but eventually he thought, well, it is true that I neither fear God nor respect any human being. Because this widow keeps bothering me, I shall deliver a just decision for her, lest she finally come and strike me. The Lord said, pay attention to what the dishonest judge says. Will not God then secure the rights of his chosen ones who call out to him day and night? Will he be slow to answer them? I tell you, he will see to it that justice is done for them speedily. When the Son of Man comes, will he find any faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. And the word of the Lord cleanses from our sins. Well, this, uh, <laughs> a lot of times when I, we, we have this gospel, we see people just with their serious prayer faces, you know. But this is funny. I mean, this is funny. This is a, uh, you know, it says basically maybe to put it in a little bit of an accent, if you don't mind, but I mean, it, it says, Jesus says, now look, there was a judge in a certain town and this widow kept coming to him day after day. I demand justice from you against my opponents. And day after day she comes and the judge finally says, hey, hey, if I don't give this woman what she wants, she'll wear me out and give me a black eye. <laughs> and so <laughs> sometimes we miss the humor in uh, you know, we, we, we all know of, of that personality type that's very persistent. It won't give up easily. And the Lord is basically saying to us, although it's a kind of a funny parable, he's saying, listen, pay attention. You've got to pray always and not lose heart, and not grow weary. So we see that there is a, um, a very important lesson for us here. In a way, the Lord is saying, look, wear me out a little. You know, you know, we can be, if, as you know, we can all be like kids in a candy store. Mommy, Daddy, I want this. And say, yeah, yeah. And they know. Two, ten seconds later, you forget about that thing and want something else, you know. So sometimes the Lord asks us to stay persistent in prayer, certainly not for his sake. He knows what we need, and he knows what's good for us. But um, 
for our own sake. You know, it helps us to clarify our desires. When something's really important, and we're even willing to change our life for it, we'll keep going to God and keep going. And that helps us. God is not deaf, and God does not have a poor memory. It's for us. So we need to learn that. The first reading had a beautiful image of prayer. Don't just pray all by yourself for yourself. Get some prayer warriors to join you, you know? We often have the instinct to ask each other to pray. But again, Moses, as long as his arms were up, the battle went well, but when they went down, well, so Aaron and Hur came and supported his arms. So for you and me, who is your Aaron? Who is your Hur? Who are the ones that pray with you and for you? In my own parish, we have a group of women that get on the phone every morning, and they pray together for about 20 minutes on the phone, just praying, lifting up the needs of the church, the parish, and each, each one of them, their families. And, you know, that's a good thing. That's a good model. So I hope that um, all of you have some prayer warriors, and particularly if you're at home and can't get to Mass because of illness or age, I certainly hope that um, that old invention called the telephone or some other way to reach out and say, join me in prayer. Uh, we really need to not just pray alone, but pray for each other. We also don't ever forget to ask the intercession of Our Lady because the, the wedding feast at Cana tells us she's a powerful intercessor. She almost, you got the Lord to change his mind there if you really read the text. And so again, uh, go to her, go to the saints, but go to one another and persist in prayer. Don't give up easily. And finally, the Lord will say, all right, all right, already. <laughs> I'll give you what you want. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now, my brothers and sisters, in our prayers to God, we must never lose heart. So in confidence, we ask the Lord today for all the needs of the church and the world. For those who are suffering alone, may they prayerfully call on the Lord through all their trials and tribulations, knowing that he will draw close to them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For prayer groups all over the world, may their ongoing commitment bring blessings to the world as they grow in fervor and fidelity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for an openness to life within the sacrament of marriage and an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and the permanent diaconate. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who find it hard to pray, may they persevere and call on the Holy Spirit when they cannot find words to express what is in their hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we make our prayers to you for the needs of the church and the world and for our own needs. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh,
please pray now that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with all the company of the angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the, for the, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, uh, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Wilton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And 
the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Worthy to receive you. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodit animo meum, in vita materna. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and be prepared for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. To our benefactors, to the Basilica, and to all who help make this Mass possible through volunteer work, those who attend and those who serve and sing, and for all, we, th we give thanks. And to you who are at home, especially those of you who are ill, you may not feel like Aaron and her, but you are. <laughs> because St. Paul says, when I'm weak, that's when I'm really strong. 
because the power of Christ rests. So we need your prayers. So lift up our arms by your prayers and assist us. Even if you can't get out and do some of the things you used to do, your prayer has never been more powerful. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. If you cannot attend Mass and would like to receive the Eucharist at home, please contact your parish directly. To help support the TV Mass from the Basilica, call 1-866-507-8757 or visit faithdirect.net slash basilica tv mass. Everything changed from that moment I found out I was pregnant. Without the Knights of Columbus donating these ultrasounds to the Women's Care Center, I don't think I would have ever have kept my son. I wanted to either put him up for adoption or I was either gonna have an abortion. I was still in high school. I was so scared, I was so nervous. But when I saw him, my baby on the ultrasound, and I heard his heartbeat, I remember just falling in love with. It was a tiny little peanut. That's when I'm like, I, I want to keep him. This is my child. So I'm very grateful for getting the opportunity to have and see my son. And just that changed my life completely. Thank you, Knights of Columbus. <laughs>